dog. Prince. Solar. Cure. Round of 20. Group E. 2022 Hot 6 GSL Season 3. All right. Welcome back, everyone. It's time to kill off one of these players in Group E. Uh, I want to remind everybody, because it feels like it was so long ago, the Dark vs. Prince series was actually pretty good. I think Prince has a real shot here. I do think Solar is favored by quite a bit. But um, let's see what he's got to offer here in this best of three. Yeah, Prince busted out some pretty interesting builds there in that first yeah. best of three. The map that he won was with some really cool Blink DT play off of two bases that he did gas first. Two gas, Blink DT. So the Zerg player like goes to the natural, like scouts it, it's like, ah, oh, probably like a depth or something, yeah. loser. <laughs> and then he like blinks DTs at his base and kills him. It was sick. I love to see cool builds like that. Really I... thinking outside the box. Obviously did a lot of prep coming into this group. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I thought it was a great, um, it's just great to see something that fresh. Yeah. We're yeah, like, oh, fun. man, we can keep coming up with new stuff in uh, in this game. It's going to be Cosmic Sapphire here for map number one. Prince with a pretty impressive showing against Dark. Might have a shot now against Solar, but let's not forget, he's going to have to PVZ his whole way through Group E That's if he's right. going to move on. So it's going to be a tough road ahead. Um, anyways, our map has just now loaded up, guys. Game one in the Losers match, best of three, starts now. Onside Gaming, Solar. Team GP, Prince. Um, we actually have uh, a probe once again coming down to block the uh, natural expansion. Now we did see him do this against Dark uh, as well. So this just seems to be sort of his default opening here is to manipulate the positions of the second base. Yeah, uh, nice every quick. Game. Whether he, he really fully tries to do that much with it or not. Uh, you know, it could also be that it, this is less about trying to block that uh, hatchery and also about like just spotting some kind of cheese coming in here. I think it's both. Like, yeah. um, as Protoss, if you consider that uh, no matter what, you're gonna send the probe out to scout to get good intel on the Zerg. So, if you do like a cost benefit analysis of like comparing, sending it a little bit later and like harvesting a little bit more minerals, you're also getting the intel later. Right. It's nice because you have a little bit more money. But besides that, like, of course, the scouting is late and Zerg gets to build the natural right where they want it. But if you scout nice and quick like these guys do, I mean, some guys will even just pull a probe right at the start of the game if it's an especially long map. Right. You're uh, not only getting the intel immediately, but also, I mean, although you're losing a little bit of minerals, so is the Zerg, because their expansion's so far away. If they want to transfer any drones or anything, it takes a little bit more time, so. Nice little standard adjustment that we've seen a lot of Protoss players make. Legacy of the Void has developed, and people are figuring the game out more and more. Of course, it's very annoying for all the Zergs, which is <laughs> important. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so, uh, yeah, this pro basically just keeping uh, the Zerg honest. We're about to ha uh, have the cybernetics core finish, and so we want to watch and see, you know, what is the tech path exactly that Prince wants to take? Uh, he did show us a lot of pretty novel uh, approaches to the matchup early on, but, mm. you know, how many of those can you have here? Uh, I don't know how Prince views his path to victory in this group because it it's kind of weird. Like, he, he played really well against Dark. He took a game off him. But ultimately, he lost, right? Right. Now, Solar is maybe just slightly worse than Dark, just like by a smidge, right? Mm -hmm. But, like, you would have to, to basically win four PVZs <laughs> versus both Solar and Dark. It's tough. Uh, that's tough, man. It's very tough. I think what happened in the prep here for Prince is he had some really good ideas to maybe beat Dark. And then from there, he just figures out... Uh, well, I guess they also have Solar's on the other side there, too. No, I bet he has a lot of different PVZ builds. I, for, for a second, for some reason, I forgot there were, like, two Zerks in the group. 
I would think that he has a lot, too. Yeah. Especially no. considering the way I that take it uh, all back. he played against Dark in the first series. He obviously did a ton of prep with that Blink DT build. Yeah. Just something out of the box that we've never really seen at GSL. And I imagine he's going to mix in a lot of builds like that, as well as something like this, like four gate adepts. Sometimes we might see him go five or six gate adepts yeah. instead as an all-in. So this is going to be a little bit quicker. It mm -hmm. will look a lot like what we had in game three in the first best of three, but um, the idea is it starts up faster. You have a lot less, of course, but mm -hmm. then the Zerg might not be as ready and things Ooh, can snowball. Two more gateways going down. So oh, never Prince, mind. once again, going for it's the same build. effectively an all-in, yeah. and. Um, I was wondering about that, too, because you notice here in the main base, just as we saw in that third game against Dark, he only has four guys on gas, not six probes. So even though it's a two-gas opening, his gas income is very low. He has a ton yeah. of minerals, and he's just going to spend all of that on Adepts. And this against Dark didn't work very well. He had a healthy number of Adepts, and he shaded into the main base, canceled that shade, and was chased down by three Ravagers, which killed like three or four Adepts, I it feels like. Dude, that's too bad he didn't kill that Overlord. No, that hurts. A, a lot of that is, uh, you know, it's nice to kill that right before the attack comes out. So the question we got to ask ourselves now is, you know, how ready is the um, is the Zerg going to be? He does. I'm sorry. I think my eyes are playing tricks. Is that block? That pylon? That yeah, yeah, that blocks. Okay, that all right. Blocks. For a second, I thought that didn't block. No, I'm like, no, no. oh, that's strange. Okay. Well, Silver so, has a really healthy queen count. He did not over drone. He's only at 36 workers. He's mixing in roaches as well as the lings. So he has all the pieces of the puzzle. As long as he doesn't get out positioned here, even has a. Oh, oh dude. Okay. Big ramp block here. Nowhere to kite these adepts. The yeah. queens are going to come in here. The warp prism isn't going to be over here. He's not even going to try to pick them up. He's going to warp in more over here right now. Is adepts of the third base going to try and find some more damage? But right now. Prince struggling to find too much. Only two drones going down so far. His sword is really just trading out army for adepts, which is exactly what he wants to do. Keep in mind, this is not a four gate adept pressure to play into a third base. This is six gate adept, so there is a lot riding on this for Prince. And only three drones for all those adepts? That is not the payday he was looking for. Okay, so this was a, a really bad attack in here. Uh, now, probes have started, which a lot of times means that he's like already starting to back out of uh, the attack here. Mm, I don't know if there's a transition out of this, well, though. I think, yes, that was, that's what I was going to say. Is like yeah. there, there really isn't like a plan B. Um, it does seem like Prince might have... Um, he might have been a little bit more shallow than we thought as far as planning goes. That's uh, possible. It could also be that his one of his plans is to kind of mix this build in and everything. Yeah, three. yeah. But, yeah, as it is right now, these yeah. adept plays not really working for he, him. He didn't even pick up those adepts with the War Prism, so, I no. mean... Perhaps nerves getting to him just a yeah. little bit here. Well, I mean, this is also a little bit embarrassing, right? Like, we saw him try this earlier on. Um, another warp in over here. Yeah, we're just slowly watching Prince bleed out of depths, and he did finally find some drone damage right here at third yeah. base. Yeah, he did get some workers there. He's going to try to get some more. He actually got quite a few. That's going to bring um, Solar's drone count all the way down to 28, so this, he's going to have to drone back up. Yeah, it's a 10-worker lead right now. Um, for uh, Prince, but again, there's there's no development here. What you see is what you get. Mm. He is getting a third gas, so he is like trying to slowly transition out of here. The best mm. I think Prince could ask for is to come in here and just really kill off a lot of drones. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna happen, but he is gonna set up one. Now, if he lets that finish, yeah, he doesn't. Will he try to warp into the, the main back here? I, I think, think it's he a will. bad idea. Well, he's not going to now with all those lings, but no. certainly was a game plan because with his economy, he can't really support anything except making adepts. So any moment that warp prism is not warping in, you see him floating like a thousand minerals right now. He can't spend all that. He's only got six gateways. But to his credit, he's killing a lot of lings, and he, after he got those drones, he's snowballing just a little bit. I just don't know if it's going to be enough. Engagements like this are nice where you get to clean up some of these lings, but then not kiting back. He needs to get any drones he can. Yeah, he is making an immortal, but he keeps trading out adepts. And we're at the point in time where the ling roach count is is so much that yeah. like he's not going to have much of an army. If, you know, it's funny. We're, we're seeing a lot of this stuff get killed off, but the army supply right now for Prince is 20. That's, that's, that's the, way the it real story. Goes. Yeah, that's... <laughs> in, in, in a perfect game, he kills off so many... Uh, drones or kills off so many queens and lings and roaches that the game snowballs but 
It's just not going to happen. This reminds me of uh, Legacy of the Void a couple years ago. Yeah, this is a very old where, build. Yeah, where it's just like, okay, um, you know, it. this had its time where it destroyed all these Zerks, and then mm -hmm. eventually, you know, Zerks figure out how to deal with it. And it's why um, it's become more and more of a rarity. Now, he's going to take a third base, but I feel like there's probably going to be enough muscle from the Zerk to just come in here and deny this. And the third base is almost a bait. He's not making any more probes. He's just going to saturate that and then go for a kill if it happens. But more realistically, I think Solar is probably going to try and just move across the map and kill him. Yeah, well, he's, you know, I think also Solar was pretty smart about this. He just didn't have drones at his natural, so uh -huh. that there weren't a lot of opportunities to try to, like, hit different locations. Um, and this next, honestly, I didn't think there was going to be another attack, but let's see how this one with the uh, Immortal is hidden inside the Warp Prism go. This has potential to get something done, but probably not head on. It's certainly not head on. It's not fool ourselves. It's a lot of yeah. roaches and queens. But the shade in the main could be big. He actually cancels it, so he's going to instead go for trading army right here in the front. But he has to be careful not to overextend his welcome because once all those roaches and raptors come in, it's very dangerous. All right, another big warp in comes. He is going to come towards the Spine Crawler. He's going to move forward here. These Immortals are very neatly placed in the back. Behind all of this, Solar is Lings in the natural base of uh, Prince. Prince's third base also oh, got canceled, so Prince just completely it. cleaned GG. up right now. Solar with a very strong defense there against the six gate at Warp Prism uh, Depth All in. Going to take game number one, and now Prince on his last legs. If he loses one more map, he is out of the round of 20. Yeah, man. Um, I don't know what Prince has. What else? Y you know, I think he had such cool strategies to start this off. I'm not against that strategy, by the way. I, I get the problem is if it doesn't work, you know, you just you look a little clowny, right? It's something you got to mix in sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's good to have in your deck of build orders, right? But um, what is he gonna do in the next game here? You know. And, and by the way, we aren't really getting to see Prince play straight up. Mm. The one game that he did seem to go into macroing, Dark just killed him with Nidusis. But, you know, honestly, can that, 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 I guess that is the big question. Can you play a standard long game? Because if you're going to get out of this group with the matchups you got ahead, you kind of have to, man. All right, getting ready to go to Tropical Sacrifice for set number two. This is where we saw the Blink DT play out of Prince in our first set there against Dark. We'll see if he has any extra cool strategies prepared. Or extra straight up play state, <laughs> as I was talking about. All right, guys, tropical sacrifice. I almost said tropical satire. Tropical <laughs> sacrifice for map two. Let's go. I can do this all day. Onside Gaming, Solar. Hmm. Team GP, Prince. I don't know how I feel about this chase list. He's doing the same thing he did against Dark. The gas first opening. Now maybe there's another variant, but if this is going to be Blink DT, might be a little too predictable. Yeah, I feel like if you do this build too many times, it's like you pulled off the greatest bank heist like the first time, uh -huh. and I feel like now you're trying to rob the same bank in the same way. Yeah, it's like well this can't work this many times, right? But I mean. One of the things about this build that, that Prince does, and you know, we learned about this build today, guys. This mm -hmm. one's fresh out of the oven. Uh, I don't know if there's a very easy way to see that this is coming. I think out of almost all the builds I've seen in StarCraft, you could pretty much hide this one perfectly. That's true. And it just shows up. So, uh, you know, whereas like the Adept build that we saw from before, which hasn't worked out for him so far today, that build, I've literally lost count of how many games I've casted that were like that, okay? This one, two. I've casted two games like this so far. Um, unless, you know, he has some other uh, kind of trick with the gas that we don't know. But I, I think this is the same DT build. So I think we're kind of, I don't want to be mean here. I'm not trying to be mean when I say this, but I think this is kind of why 
Prince isn't in GSL that often mm. and why he's not as much of a, a celebrity compared to somebody like Solar here is that you need to have like a big range uh, of ways to play the game and make it work. Credit boosting the uh, Stalker as well, to me, kind of telegraphs that there is definitely something fishy going on that, yeah. that Zerg doesn't want to scout. And uh, I agree 100%. I Twilight think Council going down as well. And I, I think if you're, if you're solar in this case, having watched the previous series, and then you see the Chrono Boosted Stalker out, yeah, it's going to get your Overlord most likely. Then you're probably thinking that it's going to be something tricky, if not the same thing that happened yeah. earlier. I mean, you, you see them. The, oh, the, there actually is a spot to hide up there. I didn't realize. Yeah, you, you see that uh, Stalker come out and you go, Oh, yeah? Are you in a hurry to get the Stalker oh, out it's and gonna be, It's going to be different. we got a little bit ahead of ourselves. Oh. He's going for a Robo. He's uh -oh. building a Sentry. All right. The casters. The casters were Just cool. humiliated here. Yeah, I like this. I was, this I was cool. honestly a little right, disappointed that back. it might be the same. You know same. what? This guy's going to win the whole tournament. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> I like I'm this. I'm going to change my yeah. position. I like this. and It's odd to me also that he went for the gas first opening, but he, yeah, he only has two guys on each guy that oh, he's going for. Oh, look what it is. Adept Glaives again? Hmm. Oh, I bet he gets an Immortal with this. Perhaps? Or maybe you get a Sentry with the extra gas, and then you block off his ramp. Yeah, he has a Sentry. And you go, it's 2011, guys. <laughs> uh, the Golden Years. Okay, we'll see. For now, it's only 4-8 Adept, so this is not what we've seen in the previous two games from Prince. This is not yet looking to be like an all-in. It would, it would be very funny if you just made five gates and lost to the depths again. And I'm like, huh. It so if sad. you get the gas earlier, it also just doesn't help you at all. OK. <laughs> um, uh, probably going to be more of what we see uh, Protoss players do typically, which is, yeah, it's going to be kind of four gate adept pressure into some kind of transition. So Nexus? the third base is a lot faster than normal. Usually, you would do the Nexus behind the aggression. In this case, it's kind of preempting it. Solar is getting confirmation that there is only um, two geysers active. I think he was able to spot both gases at the natural have not been taken. So certainly this is on his radar is something that can happen. No oracles are out yet. There's only two gases. I mean, there's only so many things Protoss can do. So four adepts will be heading towards the main base of Solar in a warp prism. And Solar looks like he's gearing up either to defend or aggression or both, because he's sitting on 38 drones and he's just now starting to power up on Rouges and Lings. And maybe he thinks this is a bait. What a funny build. Hmm. Now, Lings are attacking that Nexus, but I think, yeah, sometimes the Nexus is sort of a fake, like, oh, look at me, I'm taking a third base, and then this comes out. It, it wouldn't make sense to me if he does that with four gateways, though. If it was like six gateways, then maybe, yeah, but he cancels it. Huh. But he can only produce a depth Dude. four at a time. <laughs> this game. <laughs> oh no. He's not really finding He's not much finding damage, damage with this. No. But I, I don't know. I'm, I'm very confused by the transition because again, this is only four gates. It's not really an all in. And now he's just um, taking the gases. Well, he doesn't have a third though now. And he doesn't have a third. He doesn't okay. have any tech. He's not making immortals. Oh boy. And look at look at Prince. Look mm. at how he's sitting in his chair. I think yeah. he is very aware of the position he's in in this game. That was 15 adrepts for one drone and a handful of uh, roaches and lings. Third base was denied. I guess perhaps it was a fake, but if you're going to do that, why not do it with additional gateways? I'm... I mean, Prince is in the GSL and I'm not, so clearly there's something that he gets that I don't. I'm just struggling to put no, the pieces together I, to I, figure I, this out. I don't even push back on that. I mean, I think that this... Hmm. I think that actually... No, I, I don't know. I, I actually don't understand this, man. Yeah, this I'm a this little... is a very odd. Well, here's the thing is, I think he just messed up. Perhaps. Just seeing how he had his head completely to one side as well. I mean, things are falling apart. Yeah, maybe, maybe he, he never planned on canceling that Nexus. Of course, I those things so. were attacking it. But again, you have you have adepts with glaives. You can warp him back in at home with four gateways and defend that. But then that. maybe that maybe you're not selling. I don't know. Yeah. I don't get it, man. Perhaps he overthought it just a little bit. Or maybe in his practice games, he didn't deal with counterattacks like that very often. Yeah. So it just was something that he was didn't have on his radar. It's kind of hard to dive deep into like the psyche of these players and really understand what the logic is behind their decision making. But yeah, as it is, a little bit confused. These steps not getting too much done. And the follow-up will be a third base. Blink Stalkers and a Speed Prism with Disruptors. So on paper, I love that as a transition out of this. It's just that it feels like the Adept timing at the beginning didn't get enough done to actually give this build room to breathe because now the Zerg just has so much. 
Yeah. That it's you're going to be hard hard fought to find any value out of the disruptor, and with the Roachling count as high as it is already, Solar can either commit to a timing attack with a handful of mutas to kill the prism, or he can just straight up go for mutas because he has enough of a ground army to deflect any army that you know Prince can muster at this point because. Frankly, he still is only on four gateways. He has some disruptors. He's adding gateways now. Yeah, I mean, these gateways are much needed. He, he did take a very different path uh, to maybe end up in the same spot. Yeah. Let's see how these disruptors do. Um, There's a lot riding on these disruptors, Chaseless. He's got to get some damage done, I think, because his tech path is playable against Roachling, um, Roachling Muta, but it's not what you want. Robotech. Almost countered in a sense. First disruptor comes in, gets three drones. Second one, not quite able oh, to connect. No! Oh, no. Well, that's just a blunder. No. Oh. oh. Dude, Prince is looking more and more depressed as this goes on. Yeah, this is. This is. One bad decision just kind of cascading into a waterfall. This is of like, yeah. Failures is. This is like, you know, you slip on the banana peel. Yeah. And, you know, you step on a rake and it hits you in the nose, and then he sits down on a bench and it's got wet paint on it, you know? <laughs> it's tough. Everything's going wrong. He's not completely out of the game right now, but this is a very difficult position to come back from now. This is like a Wiley e. Coyote game where he's like not getting the Roadrunner and all he's of his He's moving traps across are the map. Yeah. I feel like right now, if you're Prince, you gotta play the defense. You gotta. You gotta find value with the yeah. disruptors back at home, and you gotta eventually work towards maxing because. This counterattack from Solar could be fatal. And Prince, keep in mind, he does not have a recall. He just recalled a Disruptor. So him yeah. moving across the map, this is a base trade against a Mutaling player. Yeah, I mean, it, this is oh. this is bad. I, I think we may see him tap out. He's probably going to try to at least go for the base trade, see what he can find. He will, but this is but not. This is, this is certainly better for the Zerg here. Yeah, Protoss base trading is like a, a tale as old as time yeah. in terms of not working out in this no, kind of it's, position. It's, just, it's not a race that's really built for that. It's not like Terran. It could, it could potentially work if you had more defense back at home well, and maybe a recall available, the, but, but as it is, it's just not in the cards. Yeah, the Zerg basically has more bases to lose, so you kind of run out of everything. Mm. Uh, the Zerg, by the way, uh, will probably have enough to just make a hatchery somewhere else. But basically, Zerg can kill all this off and then just run back home. It's only five probes. Um, there's no way to... Uh, for, I don't believe there's a probe on the map. There, so I, I, I don't, don't think, think he, so. I don't think he can like make a nexus to try to defend it. No, in fact, we're probably going to see elimination by uh, buildings quite soon, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I think you're right. Yeah, he can't build anything anywhere, right? Yeah, those, oh. are, those are all the probes. Yeah, he's going to so, save those probes. Well, I mean, how do you do oh. that? Is the prism coming? Oh, the prism at 12 o'clock is on the way. Oh, my God, and it's so it's mission damaged. Impossible. Oh, there's no. mutas, too. No! Yeah, there's, there's no way they're getting out. All right. Uh, he's G... Yeah, I can see the frustration Jeez. on his face. Yep. All right. Well, well, that's that. Yeah, unfortunate there for Prince. Could see that he had a different idea in mind than uh, the way that it developed, but instead it's going to be Solar advancing 2-0 in the elimination match to face a Dark and a ZVZ yep. in the final match of the day. ZVZ, final match. This is going to be a good one. Um, I'll tell you, man, I've seen Solar beat Dark before. That's I do think Dark's possible. a little bit scarier, but um, this should be a good one. Yeah, tough loss there to digest for Prince. I mean, he showed some really cool builds, especially that uh, Blink DT build that we've I've never seen in pro play was very cool to see. But yeah, just the other strategy is not really working out for him. Struggling with the macro build in game number one against the Nidus, and then he had a couple different ideas with the depth timings. But yeah, that's going to be it. Guys, we're going to be right back with the final ZBZ of, um, yeah, of this group. Stay tuned.